Thunderfoot has a series on why people laugh at creationists. Well, if creationists deserve to be laughed at for believing the Earth is 6,000 years old, how much more does someone deserve to be laughed at for saying the Earth is the center of the universe? Enter this guy, Pavel Kolasa. In this video, I am proving that the Earth is motionless center of the universe. See? If the Earth revolved, the centrifugal force uh, would cause people to wait uh, twice less on equator than, for example, in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, the equation for centrifugal force is uh, this. This is a classic example of garbage in, garbage out. Physics equations are wonderful, but useless in the hands of a moron who doesn't have a clue how to use them. Put your weight as mass, but if you really care about the concept of mass, uh, take it up with uh, physicists uh, who uh, put mass in equations, then substitute weight for, for it in kilograms. Uh, no. The gram, and by extension the kilogram, is a measure of mass, not weight. If you're 80 kilograms on Earth, then you're 80 kilograms on the Moon, 80 kilograms in deep space, and so forth. Weight is a product of mass and acceleration due to gravity. The metric unit of weight is the newton, not the gram. If you see a scale that weighs things in kilograms, they are automatically factoring in Earth's gravitational pull. Not a very good start for someone who wants to overturn 300 years of science. Or just look it up in Wikipedia and don't ask me stupid questions. Right, because even stupid questions are beyond your ability to answer. Let's see how this really works. At the North Pole, with no centrifugal force, your weight is your mass times the pull of Earth's gravity, which is 9.86 meters per second squared. So if your mass is 80 kilograms, your weight at the North Pole is 788.8 newtons, or about 177.3 pounds. As for the equator, you can't just use the regular equation for centrifugal force because it doesn't take gravity into consideration. The first factor to consider is that the Earth bulges at the equator due to this very same centrifugal force that this brainchild denies exists. The gravitational pull therefore drops to about 9.80 meters per second squared. So already the force of gravity is lower. Now we need to calculate the centripetal acceleration at the equator. This is done using the formula 4 pi squared r over t squared. We plug in the period of rotation, which is not 24 hours, but 23.93 hours, or 86,164 seconds. The equatorial radius of the Earth is 6,378 kilometers. Plug all of that into our equation, and the result is about 0 0.03 meters per second squared. This counteracts part of the gravitational acceleration, taking it down to about 9.77 meters per second squared. Remember that our 80 kilogram man weighed about 177 pounds at the North Pole. Now with these two factors lowering his acceleration, his weight drops to 781.6 newtons, or about 175.7 pounds. So he's lost 1.6 pounds just by being at the equator instead of at the North Pole. And yes, this has all been verified experimentally. The, cent the centrifugal force uh, would affect the weight of objects uh, on Earth greatly. Uh, we would be tr uh, transporting gold and diamonds from the uh, equator, where it would weigh uh, less, and selling it up north. I just showed it makes very little difference on the Earth's surface. The weight loss your cargo would get at the equator would be vastly outweighed by the extra time to get to the equator and back. Uh, another issue, so satellites. The satellites have no engine, yet once brought uh, up to the orbit, they start going around the Earth on their own. Uh, wrong. Satellites do have rocket engines. In addition to the rocket that gets them into orbit, the satellites themselves have to maneuver the rest of the way and get into the correct orbital position and make adjustments through the life of the satellite. And they absolutely do benefit from equatorial launches. The Sea Launch Platform is a privately owned and operated rocket launching facility which launches from international waters, greatly easing the burden of regulatory compliance since it only has to deal with international law, not the laws of any one country. But there's another advantage. Since it's at sea, it's just as easy to launch the rocket from the equator 
as anywhere else. This gives the rocket an extra orbital boost from the approximately 1,674 kilometers per hour of equatorial speed, which again would not exist if this guy's delusions were correct. This means that once the satellite gets into the proper position, it has a greater amount of fuel remaining, increasing its lifespan. Because the space, ar space around the Earth is revolving around it, otherwise they, they would just drop. <clears throat> Even a can of Coca-Cola will become the satellite of the Earth if it was placed on the orbit. Again, for no reason it would start going around the Earth. No, that's because the, the, the space around the Earth is revolving around it, so a can of Coca-Cola or satellites without an aging would start going around the Earth. Okay, so how do you explain geosynchronous orbit? This is where the satellite orbits the Earth at the same rate as Earth's axial rotation period. From our point of view, the satellite is stationary in the sky. So you can point your satellite dish at one point in the sky, and you never have to move it. But if the Earth weren't turning, that means that these satellites wouldn't be orbiting, and absolutely would fall back to the ground. Another proof that satellites uh, provide is the fact that they keep on orbiting the Earth on the same height, despite the supposed travel of the Earth through the space. If the Earth was traveling through the space, the satellites would have to constantly adjust their speed in order to keep up. As I said, they do. That's why a satellite's life ends when it has no more fuel. Uh, astronomers uh, also observe that the universe is expanding away from the Earth in all directions with the same speed. Uh, that proves that uh, the universe started from the Earth. No, because anywhere else in the universe you might happen to be, you'd notice the same thing. Everywhere appears as the center of the universe. Uh, there are millions of life forms on Earth, yet there is not a single life form observed anywhere in the known universe, and we can see pretty much billions and trillions of stars. Which might mean something if we can tell just by looking at the stars whether or not there's life there. But we can't. From space, our solar system looks just like any other. Even from a near-Earth orbit, you can't see any signs of life, although you could pick up our radio signals. Download Google Earth and see just how far down you have to go in order to see definite signs of life, such as roads and canals, and how much further you have to go to see the individual life forms themselves. I think you'll be surprised. We don't have anywhere close to the technology needed to visually confirm life. We've only recently been able to take a picture of a planet orbiting a sun-like star, and that's only because the planet is very large, eight times the mass of Jupiter, and 330 times the distance from its sun as Earth is from ours. If we can't yet visually confirm an Earth-like planet orbiting a sun-like star in the Goldilocks zone, how can you possibly say there can't be life elsewhere because we haven't seen it yet? If the Earth revo revolved, the resulting uh, difference in speed of revolving Earth and the stationary atmosphere around the Earth... Earth's atmosphere is not stationary. In particular, hurricanes are caused by the Earth's rotation creating a Coriolis effect, which is what makes the hurricane spin. This can be verified experimentally using a Foucault pendulum. The pendulum is free to swing, and the direction of the swing changes in predictable ways depending on the latitude where the pendulum is located. On the poles, it would come back around to its initial direction in 12 hours. On the equator, it wouldn't change at all. And it's impossible for, uh, for planets to have elliptical orbits. That's because they would have to speed up and slow down for no reason. Not for no reason. It's because the elliptical orbit takes them closer to and further away from the Sun. The closer they get to the Sun, the greater the acceleration from gravity. The further away, the lesser the acceleration. And yes, this has been observed and measured. And uh, they would have to go away from one another planet and then go farther and come closer, go farther, and they can't do it because their gravity is the same uh, at all times. No, it isn't. Gravity increases exponentially as the distance between the bodies decreases. The mass never changes, but
but distance is very important in gravitational equations. Uh, there is an experiment uh, in physics calls, called uh, Aries failure that proves that the Earth is motionless, yet it is uh, ignored by science precisely because it is proving that the Earth is motionless. No, it's ignored because it's completely stupid. Aries failure refers to a ridiculous experiment where a telescope filled with water doesn't have to change its angle to track a star. What these idiots think the refraction of light by water has to do with the rotation of the Earth is anybody's guess. But again, this can easily be verified with time-lapse photography, showing that the stars do indeed move in the sky in accordance with Earth's rotation. In this video, I am proving that the Earth is motionless center of the universe. Mm -hmm.